everybody. My name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. Hi everyone, I'm Miranda Abby Dyer, Director of Channel at Cognac. Miranda, so good to have you here. Really appreciate it. Um, I have mentioned this in multiple videos, but I'm going to say it again because I just can't get enough of it. Um, it's day four. We're wrapping up Cisco Live today. It's been amazing. This is my first time overseas, so like getting to tour the, tour the city, be here in the DevNet zone, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and as we were talking about pre-show, I, I had come by the World of Solutions and was walking around, checking things out, and I had to stop by the Meraki booth because, of course. And while I was there, I learned a little bit about Cognac and what, what you all do. So I really wanted to give you an opportunity to tell everyone watching, what, what is your place in the ecosystem for Meraki and with Cisco, and um, specifically around, I believe, around the cameras and the, the, the MV Sense, if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks. Well, first off, welcome to Amsterdam. Um, hope you had a great time. Stay four. Um, we are Cognac. We are an AI computer vision platform, and we allow non-technical users to build and train custom models using as little as 50 images to run on the Meraki camera's edge device. Um, we're super excited to be here demoing our coffee cup detector. So if you come by and have a coffee, uh, make sure to check the counter because we're counting them in real time. That's very cool. And I definitely need coffee. It's been very hard <laughs> to find good coffee. The lines have been huge everywhere. Yeah. So, um, And I'm very curious. So. It, it, using the coffee cup detector as an example, um, I've worked with some customers in, in past years um, who are in retail and in some cases in healthcare. Um, and actually, this is an example I just remembered. There was a healthcare customer. I, I live in the Bay Area, California, and there was a healthcare customer we did a, a proof of value for years ago. And the, what was interesting about that is they were able to use MV Sense. Th this healthcare customer had a, a, a challenge where they had um, a lot of their um, restricted medications in a locked room that had to be badge access and compliance and some things around that. And so they wanted to use MV Sense as a way to compare records from the badge system with who was actually entering the room. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you a bit about how does your platform and how, do your, how does your work enable things like that to happen for any sort of customer? Yeah, absolutely. So our platform is not vertical specific. However, we have tons of different use cases across the verticals you just mentioned, like retail and healthcare. So healthcare, you know, we can identify where IV drips are, or we can also identify wheelchair, when someone enters in a wheelchair to make sure that they're assisted to the right place. Um, in retail, theft and high value assets or items to make sure customers are customer service through the store and really going beyond native people counting or people detection, which is on the Rocky camera, and taking it to the next level and having customers be able to identify assets in their environment that are important to them. Interesting. Could you tell us a little bit more, let's say, in like the retail space? How would that sort how would that sort of additional modeling apply in like a particular use case for retail? Yeah, absolutely. So we all know that MV Sense allows you to detect people, but going another step further and understanding, you know, when somebody's crouched over with a hood on in an area for a long time to detect for physical security type applications or understanding, you know, when shelves are empty so that they get restocked so that customers can find the goods they want and get out on time. So it's all about you know, making spaces smarter and using the camera as a sensor to detect assets or uh, things in their environment that are important to the customer. You know, I, I really appreciate hearing that uh, for a lot of reasons. One of them is, ChatGPT is an example of yeah. AI and ML. Is, everyone's seen it. I've, I've used it to write a few blog posts. Don't, don't worry, I, I haven't actually published. Are you using it right now? <laughs> no, that'd be awkward. No, um, I, what I've, I think everyone's getting a, getting a sense of is AI can do a lot, but some people are very worried, uh, rightly so, that there are some concerns with AI kind of in general. And I, I think what's interesting about this is it creates a, what you're describing creates a lot of really interesting context around, yeah. like in two forms. One, actual context in the data, the actual part of the, the training of these models, but context around how AI can actually be used um, it, I, I'm using that term very broadly in this case, but how it can actually be used to solve for real world problems that is not simply, I type something into a chatbot and I get some text back. Yes, that is a, that, that's there. Um, and I find it really interesting that what you're, it sounds like what you're really able to do is provide a business with the ability to say, yes, this AI can pick certain things like how many people are dwelling in an area because there's faces, but almost do that and then add even more context to say, I'm not concerned about 10 people standing here, what I'm looking for specifically is some other set of contextual based data about that. Um, how is that working for your cu for customers? How are they actually finding themselves being able to solve real problems using that technology? Yeah, I mean, you talk about like chat GPT and you know, the world today, there's staffing shortages across and customers want higher value experiences when they're going out, especially with you know cost of living today. So what we're doing here is you know, we're not replacing people, but we're allowing um, 
the cameras to assist and because only about you know, one percentage of video footage is actually watched in real time, mm -hmm. it's just an extra set of eyes to you know, give business insights in real time to make experiences better and also make people more productive. So there's always a human in the loop with what we do. And the way that we build and train models is using real world imagery. Um, so you label about 50 images, teach an asset. Um, you know, if I wanted to look for um, you know, a very nice coat in a store and I want to make sure, hey, if someone goes up to there, I want to make sure that somebody is you know, talking to them. If that item gets moved, we want to make sure someone can go talk to them because um, you know, maybe they don't know it's waterproof or whatever that is and they're looking for something. So we're getting actionable data and the way that we work with some of the other ecosystem partners in this space to close the loop, um, companies like MPro5 are a really good example of this as well, to really make sure that the users on the ground are getting this actionable data to make value of it um, to customers. You are you're driving something home that I like. We love in the DevNet zone anyway, but there's this particular message that comes across all the time, which is, um, and I've mentioned it in several videos, but I'm going to mention it again because I think it's worth saying. It, in the classic network engineer world, the, there's a, there has been a thought for a long time that oh, if I automate all these things, I'm going to automate myself out of a job. And the thing that you've just said, and I think you've just hit the nail on the head, is what your what the your technologies do is enable a person, a business, to be able to say. We're going to automate away the things that are so repetitive that the human mind is not great at doing, but what a human is really good at doing is looking at the context to make a really good decision. So how can we automate away the things that are repetitive and keep showing up in a particular way so that a person can sit back at 10,000 feet and say, what do we want to do with this? What are the decisions we want to make? Because one thing is really good for a computer to do, one thing is really good for a person. But when we reverse those or try to mix them, as you said, people can't just watch CCTV or watch videos all the time. It doesn't work. Even if they yeah. wanted to, their brains aren't going to be able to process and yeah. make the right decisions. And I find that it's a perfect message for being here in the DevNet Zone because that's what we want to encourage people to do is to find ways to automate for, to solve real problems for their business rather than thinking of this as a, a way to automate yourself out of a job, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely a lot of room for everyone in this. And we're uh, really excited about you know what Cisco brings to Cognac with the big channel of partners. Um, from you know, system integrators to the ecosystem at Meraki. Um, it's a really exciting time for us. I haven't mentioned it yet, um, but on February 21st, we will be launching on Cisco Global Price List. Oh, that's fantastic. And we will be an additional uh, software license for MB. So you'll have the Meraki camera, Meraki hardware license, mm -hmm. MB Sense and then the Cognac license where you get access to our platform to build and train custom models to deploy to cameras. So we're really excited about the partnership and working with the ecosystem. That's amazing. And that makes it so much easier for customers to actually engage and buy, not just purchase, but actually get started on using these things. That's that's really good to hear. Miranda, thank you so much for being yeah, here. Thank really you so appreciate much. it. And thank you all for joining us. You can find all of our information at developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live.